to Slow Living. I'm Esther and in today's video I will show you how I flipped a thrifted merino knit sweater from a sort of baggy oversized style into a cute crop modern um, knit style. So I've taken off a little bit of length, I've added this cute little frill which also brings it in at the waist and of course you can wear it a bit more off the shoulder if that's your style and I've just rolled up the sleeves a little bit. So it's a nice little update for an old knit if you have something lying around. This is a great way to get a bit more wear out of it, change it up, um, make, it into, make it into a different look and sort of upcycle some of the clothes that you do already have. Let's get started. This is the knit that I bought from Savers Thrift Store for $9.99. Um, the tag says cotton on. I don't know if it is actually from the cotton on chain that we know because it looks quite old, um, but you never know. It could be one of their earlier pieces. It is a, I think it was wool acrylic it said on the tag, um, which is always a bonus because wool is a really beautiful fiber and I always look for it when I'm at thrift stores. Surprisingly, it didn't have any holes in it, but it was missing a button and that's a super easy fix. So once you have your knit, you want to try it on to see what the fit is like before you do anything. Choose a length that is comfortable for you, depending on how cropped you would like it. You could just take it up an inch or two, or you could make it super cropped um, and make it a lot shorter if that is your style. Um, pin all the way around the cardigan. Doesn't have to be perfect, but don't forget to do the back. Um, once we take it off, we can fix it up and make sure that everything is sitting straight and properly before we cut anything. When you are happy with the length, you can take it off. And this is when we can make sure that our side seams are the same length. Just use a measuring tape um, and adjust your pins as necessary. Um, make sure you pin all the way around your cardigan and also just even out any bits that look uneven or look bunched up so that when we cut it, it's nice and simple and it will be easier to hem and finish off well. It is very important to leave some room for your seam allowance. So before you cut anything, you might want to mark at least an inch of seam allowance and then be very careful with your fabric scissors and cut nice and slowly in as straight a line as possible. At this point, I used a little bit of elastic and a bit of scrap fabric to test out um, what the hem would look like if I finished it with the elastic. But in the end, I wasn't actually very happy with how that looked. I wanted it to be a little bit more free flowing. So I ditched the elastic and I chose to overlock the edge. Um, so if you have a serger or an overlocker, now might be a good time to overlock straight across the edge so that uh, little bits and pieces don't come off. Because this is a knit, it shouldn't actually come undone. So if you don't have a serger or an overlocker, don't worry. You can also use the zigzag stitch on your domestic machine if you have one. Um, now to finish off the hem, I'm going to pin it up one inch or however much seam allowance you left um, when you cut it. Pin it up nice and even um, and now we're going to press it in place because that will make it a lot easier to use our zigzag machine to finish off that hem really nicely. Once you've pressed it, you should do a little test run with your zigzag stitch or your cover stitch if you have a cover stitch machine. Um, we always check our stitches before we do it on the final product just to check that it's right. Um, my tension was a little bit out here, you can see, but I wasn't too fussed by it. I actually use the stepped zigzag because I find that that works a lot better. You can see it here where each zigzag is actually made up of three and then six stitches instead of just the one. Um, maybe check out your machine if you have that. That option and then simply sew all the way across where you have pressed your hem. To finish off your seams always either back tack or pull through your threads to the other side so that's what I'm going to do here. Um, simply use a pin or a needle and loosen up the threads so that they come to the back side of your garment and then tie a couple of knots just to secure your stitches in place. Now after hemming my garment you can see that the finished product is a little bit bubbly and that's kind of the result that I get from a domestic machine that drives me crazy but it should be fine as soon as I give it a press it should come down nicely and um, it should even shrink a little bit if you use the steam setting on your iron. Now I noticed that one of the buttons, or a couple of the buttons actually, were starting to come off. So it was really easy just to unpick them um, and re-sew them on. This is a really good idea if you see any sort of dodgy or wobbly buttons because it will save you losing them down the track. Um, and it's often a bit of a pain to try and match your buttons again. So do be careful when you're unpicking knits because you really don't want to poke a hole in your knit. You'd have to darn that back up. 
Now, when you're sewing buttons on, you use more than one single thread. As you can see here, I've actually got about, I forget whether it was four or eight, but it's doubled over quite a few times. And that's so that your thread is nice and strong. And so that when you're sewing your button on, you actually only have to come up and down and up and down maybe two or three times, not a million times going through um, <laughs> each side of the button, which I see a lot of people doing. If you do it this way, you don't even have to tie a knot at the beginning, just leave a little tail. And then when you finish off, you can use that tail to tie off at the end with a couple of secure knots. So after doing all that, I noticed that the hem that I had chopped off was actually maybe just enough to make a sort of bandeau top. Um, as you can see here, I chose to wrap it around and try and make this sort of little crop top so that there was less waste coming from the cardigan. Um, I personally wouldn't wear this by itself, but it would be great for layering tops over. And so what I did then was wrapped it around my body, uh, sort of pinned it where I thought would be a good, uh, not too tight, but not too loose point and then I chopped it off. I'm going to sew that up um, and join it together. So it's all one piece now. And then I'm going to use this piece of elastic to sort of sew that across the top of the bandeau um, to help keep it up. So I measured the measured the length of elastic that I needed and then I sewed that together. And now I'm going to sort of split that piece of elastic into four equal bits so that I can evenly um, sew it to the bandeau. So as you can see, I'm going to stretch it a little bit as I sew and I'm keeping it right on the edge there of the bandeau. Um, I'm going to use the stepped zigzag again. So the same stitch that we used for the hem and I'm slightly pulling it as I go through the machine. Once I finish sewing it to the edge, I'm actually going to fold it over so that the elastic is covered. And then I'm going to stitch down again with a zigzag stitch. That's going to keep everything neat and tidy. Um, and then you won't be able to see the elastic from the outside when I'm wearing the top. Now, if you ever have uh, merino tops or merino clothing, you will know that they generally pill. So it's a really good idea to buy one of these D pillars. This one here I got was quite a cheap version that I got from Kmart in Australia. Uh, I don't actually know how much it was, maybe $20 in Australian. And it works a treat so far. It's rechargeable. And basically it's got the blades on the inside of that metal bit there, which sort of spin and they take off the top layer of any pilling garments. So you just sort of rest it on top of the garment. You don't have to press down or anything like that and go in these little circular motions. Um, and then you will actually see the pilling start to collect. So at this point, this is all I had planned to do for this flip, just to crop the cardigan and keep it at like a nice short length. Um, so as you can see here, if that's what you're after, then your little thrift project is complete. Um, I was pretty happy with this, um, but then I just thought mm, there's like something like a bit extra that I could do with this cardigan. And that's when I decided to add a little bit of a frill. This is a super easy way to add like a little bit of detail to a plain garment. And basically all you have to do is cut off a piece of elastic. I think the one that I used was, uh, it's like less than a centimeter in width, but you know, sort of be flexible and use whatever you have lying around. Cut that to a length around your body. So pop it around your waist and see how tight you would like it to be. And then you just have to pin that to your cardigan. To get a nice even frill, I just measured up from the bottom of the cardigan. I think it was maybe an inch, <laughs> maybe a little bit more than an inch and then pinned my elastic to that. Um, again, it's a really good idea to space out your elastic into four bits so that you get a really even ruffle. Um, and then as you do that, you can sort of pull the elastic to the side seam, to the middle of the back and to your other side seam so that you spread out the elastic nice and evenly. And then once you pin everything in place, it will be a lot easier to put it through the machine. Make sure to hold the elastic and your knit top as you sew and be very, very careful, please, because this is actually how I once sewed through my thumb in sewing school. So please do not do that and be very careful when you're sewing elastic. So if you know me, you'll know that I like to use my straight stitch as much as possible rather than a zigzag. So I actually cheated a little bit and I used the straight stitch and I found that that worked fine because for this ruffle, I'm not going to stretch it out a lot, but I would recommend that you use a zigzag stitch to be safe. And that's all there is to it. Your flip is complete.
video is part of a thrift knit series that I am doing. I picked up a bunch of knits from Savers, which is a thrifting superstore here in Australia and I've only recently found out you have them in Canada and the US as well. So I picked up a bunch of knits for less than $10 each, I think. Um, I picked out some nice merinos and some cottons, things that drape really well. And of course, in the colors that I would normally gravitate towards, which are neutrals. <laughs> so if you like that kind of minimal knit look, then I will have a few more videos coming up that you can check out where I do a few different types of flips and I sort of change these old knit styles into new fun ones. So I hope you enjoy that series. Do subscribe if you enjoyed this video and if you enjoy seeing other thrift flips or thrift hauls. Um, I really enjoy finding secondhand clothing, giving it new life or just sort of switching it up. I also do tutorials on how you can mend your clothes, make them last longer and also how you can make clothes from scratch. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I will see you again soon.